Hey everybody, you are going to hear my dog barking in the background this morning. There's not a lot I can do about it. My neighbor's gardener's here and God forbid they should ever have their trees or bushes trimmed because the dog just hates the sound of their machinery. <laughs> he just, I don't know. Normally when we do Wednesdays, it's not an issue because they're either here later or they come on Tuesday. I don't know. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. It's been one of those mornings already. Let me get you guys up on the iPad so that I can see what's going on. All right. Let's get it orientated right. the right way. There we go. Oh, and get the sound let's turned down. The right way. There we go. And you know what? While I'm thinking about it, let's turn the sound off on the desktop. So if we have background noise, it's just the dog. <laughs> All right. On the iPad, I'm upside down. Am I upside down for you guys? Which would be weird because, hey, hey, Mark, how are you? Upside down. That is weird. Um, no, Lisa says no. I don't know. Hopefully, um, upside down. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can try to turn the camera. I don't know if it's going to help. Uh, ca by camera, I mean telephone. Hang on a second before we get started. It's going to make you guys dizzy. Close your eyes. <laughs> Hold on. I'm working on it. Okay, there we go. Did that help at all? <laughs> See, I turned it around. It didn't help at all, did it? It did nothing. Nausea cam. I know. Sorry, Mark. <laughs> it did nothing. It didn't do any good. I don't know. Did Periscope have another crazy update? Sorry, you guys. I'm making you all nauseous. I know I am. I don't mean to. There's always some problem with Periscope. Okay, so we're going to just have to deal with it upside down. It's a good thing we're painting flowers and we're not painting, um, you know, faces or something that you really need to see right side up. I am going to zoom in just a little bit so that you guys can see what we're going to be painting a little bit better. I didn't see what Lisa um, typed. Um, so can somebody or Lisa or somebody else type it again because I didn't see. I was playing with the camera, trying to get a better uh, picture. So I'm wetting my watercolor paints right now. Getting everything prepped. I've got my Daniel Smith watercolor palette out. And if you've downloaded the... PDF document from my Etsy shop, which costs um, $2, then you have a list of the colors that I used when I made the sample. Um, what did I do with the sample? You know, it's one of those mornings, guys. I don't know what to tell you. I had to double check and make sure I had the same shoes on when I left the house. All right. So um, here we go. So, um, and I don't know how the connection's going to be this morning. My iPad keeps flashing, um, poor connection, lost connection. So, uh, Lisa, again, I missed your comment, uh, whatever it was. Um, I don't know. We're having trouble today. I'm just having loads of trouble. My iPad, the app on my iPad just is not happy today. All right, there we go. I don't know. There we go. Hello, good morning. I don't know what's up. Lisa, I've been trying to say you made a comment. Somebody said something about your comment. I missed it. My iPad's acting up today. 
I signed out and signed back in and now it seems to be better. Oh, turn your phone upside down. Oh yeah, that works. Do that. If that works for you. When I, when I, I know, I know Jerry, if Periscope's acting funny today. I haven't done a Periscope update. Hey, Seattle, the home of Daniel Smith paint. Love that. Um, I, Mark, you may have to try going out and going back in again. I did that on my iPad and now I seem to be fine. So anybody who's having a problem with connection, go out and come back in again. I'm going to stay on here. We're going to just chat for a few minutes while everybody gets on the same page and we get our connection straightened out. When I load the video to YouTube, I will make sure to flip the picture. Um, and I'll cut out that first probably blurry playing with the camera part so I don't make anybody nauseous. I'm still sipping on my coffee. This is the sample I painted. And um, if you have downloaded the PDF document from my Etsy shop, um, you can go to Etsy and type in my name, Gina B as in boy, Aaron's, A-H-R-E-N-S. Um, in the uh, Etsy shop, it costs $2, and it includes a li complete list of all of the uh, paints that I used. I used Daniel Smith paints. It gives you the specific colors. Um, it gives you step-by-step -step pictures with notes. There is a space for you to put your own notes in the document. It's a six-page document. And then I give you a close-up shot of my... Um, of my color key. Okay, Paper Pirate. I'm not sure what that meant. Um, and then I give you a couple of sample sketches of sunflowers that you can use to trace onto hello mr singh how are you you can use these to trace onto your paper or whatever you're going to paint on either in watercolor or in acrylic monday with monday with deco art we did an acrylic um uh, uh sunflower painting i'm having one of those days you guys i had to double check and make sure i had two of the same shoes on this morning before i left to go grocery shopping i wish i had ink to copy your pdf need a new printer i, I can relate to you there um, I am recording this paper pirate. So if you're having trouble connecting to Periscope this morning, no fears. Um, it is going to be recorded and it is going to be to YouTube later. All right. So we're going to start, um, and we're going to, I'm going to show you step-by-step step how I did this. Um, you can do, um, you know, um, uh, more than one flower it's really fun to just do a close-up of you know like half a sunflower it makes an interesting composition i do give you a drawing here where i include like a sideways sunflower you could do a whole sunflower and do them stacked there's a bunch of different things that you can do but you know just practice and have some fun with it this would make a really great bookmark too if you did it on a smaller format um, and this picture here that's on the front of the pdf this is some sunflowers i did in my watercolor um, journal, which we um, I need to actually finish for the year. So next week, look for me to start working in the watercolor journal because I got lo loads of pages in there I've got to finish. So we may stop working on these for a while and start working in that book. All right, so we have chatted a lot this morning. So we've got our piece of watercolor paper. Again, if you um, don't know, have the document and you don't remember from last time, um, this is a, it would be a great book cover. This is a piece of 140 pounds Strathmore watercolor paper. I'm going to use a water soluble pencil. And these are some other like sunflowery type flowers I did this morning. There'll be a quick video on how I did these that will go straight to my Facebook group, A Life of Art and Self-Expression. So, all right. So grab yourself some kind of a water soluble pencil. Either, this is an ink tense, but it could be a watercolor pencil. Anything that's water soluble, stick with kind of a light goldish brown color. Because that'll um, blend well. They are not watercolor hint hint. Oh, the ink tents. Oh, the flowers. No, these are not done with watercolor. These, I know they look watercolory, especially this one. This is not done with watercolor. So... Um, hint, hint, Jerry is right. They are not watercolor. So, all right. So pick a light golden brown color. It'll mix, it'll blend well with the colors you're going to make your sunflower out of. So we're going to just do some sketching and just do first do a half circle. Now, of course, if you're uncomfortable with sketching, 
print out the PDF document and use some tracing paper to trace the shape onto your watercolor paper. That's okay to do. Then you might want to just go over the tracing paper lines with a water soluble pencil, something in a brown tone. Okay, just a half circle. Light, sketchy lines, nothing too dark. Okay, I'm going to turn my paper because for me it's going to be a little easier. And I'm going to start drawing my petals. Right, they don't have to all be the same size, they don't all have to be the same shape even, but you want sort of a flat on the bottom, teardroppy kind of a shape. And you want a little bit of a gap between the two petals. <clears throat> and you can have, you know, some can be bigger than others, some can be longer than others. It's going to give your flower some character. So nature is not straight and even and perfect, so your flower shouldn't be. If it's too perfect, it doesn't look natural. <clears throat> hey, Mary, good morning. I was watching your... Um, sketching video this morning. So great that everybody's in on the sketching challenge um, for sketching in November. <clears throat> I haven't done my sketch yet today because <laughs> there's too much other stuff going on. Okay, so we have this sort of a primitive sun shape, yeah? You are welcome. You're so much better at sketching than I am. <laughs> All right, so now, and I'm just, I'm still drinking my coffee, people. I need some coffee. Okay, so now we're going to go in between these petals that we drew, and we're going to do a second layer of petals in between. Now, you could get as detailed with this and realistic with this as you want. Y'all know I'm more of an expressive, impressionistic painter. That's exactly how it should be, Mary. So if you are more of a realist painter, then you want to probably take more time with this sketch. But it, you might enjoy breaking out of your box a little bit and or... Hey, good morning! And or you might want to take some time and add some more details into your sketch. Okay? For me, this is the most that I'm going to do. Now you could, when you're fi when we're finished, you could um, go in and you could leave a space to do a ladybug on the leaf or on the flower center. You could go back with acrylic paints or paint pens and add a little ladybug. That would be fun. All right, so we've got our sketch here. Okay, whatever you have to do, Mark, if you have some tips for people to straighten out their video display so they're not having to view me upside down, that would be great. Um, but whatever works for you guys, that would be fabulous. All right, so now that we've got our flower kind of sketched out, we're going to start painting. This is the fun stuff, yeah? So I've got my Daniel Smith watercolor palette. Somebody's um, already reported that there's some problems with the notifications this morning. I'm not sure what's up. So this is a Royal number eight round. Per Periscope is definitely acting funny today. So it's just a kind of a medium round brush. Um, it's not an expensive brush and it's a synthetic. All right, so we are gonna start with our lightest value just like I always do. In this case, I'm going to start with Hansa Yellow, which is a very lemony yellow color. And I'm going to come around the outer tips of my flowers with the Hansa Yellow. And then I'm going to come back in with just some water. And 
and spread that pigment out a bit. It'll be a little darker at the tip than the bottom. Do each flower that way. And remember, I used a water-soluble pencil, so it's going to um, blend with the paint a bit, and that's fine. This is a metal watercolor pan. This is actually a sh empty schmink box that I bought for my Daniel Smith paints, but you can get the same kind of box from Jack Jackson's Art in the UK. The shipping to the US is very reasonable, and it's the box is a lot cheaper even with shipping. So I would recommend you get it from there. This box is the 48 half pan box, but you actually can fit four more half pans in the box than they say. Um, so this has 52. Uh, yeah, 52. And in the PDF document, I show a um, close up of my color key that shows all the different Daniel Smith colors I actually have in this box. Yeah, 52. <laughs> So we're going to outline each flower with this Hansa yellow and then we're going to rinse our brush off and come in with some water. Sure, Mary, go for it. While I'm painting petals is a great time to ask questions. Feeling like this one's a little too dark so I'm coming in here with a damp brush and I'm lifting some of the pigment up and I'm just wiping the brush off on my rag we're not supposed to call it blotting in watercolor we're supposed to call it um, uh, lifting yes I have done that and it works um, really well Daniel Smith um, so my two favorite brands of watercolor paint, if you made me just pick one, I would pick Daniel Smith. I love the range of colors. If I could pick a second one, it would probably be Van Gogh because they have a decent range of color and I like the price point. They're more of a student grade paint, but the price point is fabulous and they have a decent uh, range of paints and you can get them at Hobby Lobby. They're between like $4 and $6 a tube. Um, so they're a really great paint, especially if you um, are just starting out. Lifting is blotting. Yeah, I know. I still call it blotting. You'll see, you'll hear me go back and forth between the two. <laughs> it's just, you know, in my mind, it's still, it's still blotting. <laughs> You're welcome. I also am collecting uh, May Mary Blue which I always want to say is a French paint, but I actually think it's an Italian watercolor paint. They are a little harder to get. They have them at Dick Blick. They have a beautiful, vibrant range of colors. I don't have any intention of ever collecting all the colors, but I am interested in collecting a few May Mary Blues to complement my Daniel Smith palette. Lots of people are having trouble getting into the recording today, and um, I'm sorry about that. I will be uh, putting it on YouTube. So this is a Schmink, empty Schmink watercolor box. Schmink is another watercolor brand. They're German, and they're great. They're really expensive. I actually own some Schminks, um, but Daniel Smith is still my favorite. They do sell their metal watercolor boxes. Um, empty, but they're pretty expensive. You can get them at Dick Blick. Um, the Jackson's Art Supply out of the UK um, sells a similar uh, box. Actually, it's it seems to be identical. It just doesn't have the Schmink name on it, and it's a fraction of the price of the Schmink box. And um, even with shipping, it's a lot cheaper than getting it from Dick Blick in the U.S. I love Jackson's art. It's one of my favorite places to get art supplies, FYI. So just keep going around. 
and you're going to end up, you're welcome. There should be on my website, ginabeerins.com, there should be a, um, a shopping, like a shopping page with different places online you can get supplies. So these little plastic squares are called half pans and you can buy them empty and then you just fill them with the tubes. Okay, so now while these petals are drying just a little bit, we'll add a little bit of color to our flower center. And I have the Zig, what is it, the glitter brush pens, the ones with the glitter in them. I like them. Okay, let's see. I'm going to add some color to the center, and I think I'm going to start with like a yellow-ish color that's on my palette. The Wink of Stella. That's what I have. Aren't they by Zig? Because remember, we're doing watercolor and we're starting light. We're going to work our way dark. And I, I put the pigment on and now I'm just using water. <laughs> Sorry, guys. It's Periscope, I'm telling you. Try, if you're on a device like an iPhone or an iPad, try completely logging out of Periscope and closing the app and then come back in. Y'all know I'm going to be on for at least an hour, so I'm going to take my time with the painting so y'all can get that straightened out. And like I said, if you miss anything, it's going to be up on YouTube. And it'll be here on Periscope later when it, um, you know, decides to... Uh, behave itself. It'll be here for 24 hours. All right, so that's pretty cool. I like that. Um, uh, we're going to go into our petals again, and I'm going to use a darker color of um, yellow. This is more of a yellow orange. It's called New Gamboge. And I don't know why, but I like to start with this middle piddle, pe piddle, middle piddle, <laughs> middle petal on the side. I'm just, I'm having one of those days, you guys. I feel like I need to double check and, you know, make sure I've got two of the same shoes on when I leave the house. I actually did that this morning. <laughs> so I'm going to add this darker color and that starts to give the petal depth. And I see all these streaky marks. I love that. And you see that I did that on this one too. And that starts to give your petals interest and make them look, you know, more natural. And this is, this again, this color is New Gamboge. Now I'm bringing it across the bottom. I'm not going all the way to the flower center. And then I'm using the tip of my brush, barely touching the paper, and I'm bringing some streaky lines up all across the petal and then kind of going around the outside of the edges so that the center part of the petal stays light where it would be sort of curled up and it would be hitting the sun. And this is sort of suggesting, um, you know, uh, wrinkles and, and um, I can't think this morning, shapes in the petal. I'm going to blend it just a bit and work my way around with the new gamboge. Doing sunflowers in watercolor is really all about layering the colors the right color in the right place, like any painting, but sunflowers are good practice for this. I don't know why my rag is on the le left side when I'm right-handed. Probably because I'm just having one of those mornings. Did everybody catch Shannon Green's uh, periscopes? I love that she's trying periscope now. You definitely could try this with the ink tents. Um, be aware that it's harder to get the ink tents to move around, in my experience, once it's dry. Um, so you need to just do one petal at a time. Yeah, who doesn't love that Shannon Green's trying Periscope now? I love it. I know it happened because her computer broke, but I can't be too sorry about that. <laughs> I do acrylics and Monday there was a uh, Monday with deco art. We did sunflowers 
and it is already on YouTube. You can always tell the uh, Periscope broadcasts on YouTube because I start out the title with Recorded from Periscope Live. She showed us all her studio room, her, her art room. And, you know, did the typical Shannon chat, chatting, it, which was fun. Okay, now I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to do something similar <clears throat> with these petals in between. But I'm going to take my new gamboge and I'm going to mix it with, I've got some, um, this is a mixture. I've got a brown color on my palette. I'm going to just use that, but you could use quidocridone gold um, or a any kind of orangey, goldy brown. And yes, and so on the Deco Art Monday, I did a sunflower and acrylic. I do do acrylics. I started out with watercolors, though. <clears throat> and watercolor is still my preference if you make me pick one. So I've created this by just mixing what was on my palette, re-wetting it, mixing it. I've created this sort of um, quadocridone gold color, this goldish brown color. And I'm going to put it on the petals in between. The ones that are in the back, farther away from the viewer. Then I'm going to come in with some water. Blend out my pigments a bit. I don't yeah, I want to put some lines in, so there I'm just dragging the brush up. Right here it's starting to bleed because I didn't let it dry enough. So I'm going to come in with my brush right along this edge and I'm lifting the pigment and straightening that out just a bit. Monday is every other Monday. So I did this week, I did Monday acrylic painting Monday with deco art and it'll be two weeks before I do another one. I just cannot manage to do two live broadcasts in the same week. I have too much other stuff going on right now. But Mr. Singh has um, um, live acrylic painting broadcasts, I believe. I think he's here somewhere. If he's not, I'm sure one of you all follow him. So do the same thing to all of your other petals. Mr. A. Singh. He's um, kind of a biggie here on Periscope. He does art tutorials. Oh, that's cool, Mary. I do own some Peerless. I was gifted them um, by my friend Peta Thompson um, of Miss Lady Petal Creations. I haven't used them very much. They're actually in my travel kit, so unless I'm out traveling, I forget they're down there. They're great to travel with, though, because they're so, so flat. Peerless are watercolors that are on little pieces of paper. <laughs> yes. It, somebody who has uh, follows Mr. Singh, um, for those who don't know him, maybe you can post a link. Oh, that's too bad, Mary. I would, I would really want to knock at the door. You know, I'm still a shy girl at heart, Mary, but, you know, I've, I'm learning in my old age to just not be so chicken about things. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> I still have my moments, so. <laughs> All right, so look, isn't that shaping up nicely? All right, so now we're going to, again, we're going to let this dry a bit. We're going to come in and we're going to work in here a bit. So I'm going to actually grad, some, grad, grad. I am sorry, you guys. I just cannot talk straight this morning. I'm going to grab some quadocridone gold. Did I use? Yeah. Quadocridone gold deep, um, which is really dark. It's this color here. Really dark goldish orange color. <laughs> well, I guess that could happen.
So I'm going to put some of this up on my palette and then I'm going to wet my brush and add a little water to it. So the metal pan, the empty half pans you can get there. You also can get, um, Jackson seems to be one of the few places that if you do decide you want to start collecting, say, schmink paints, which like I said, they're a top watercolor brand and they are a fabulous brand. Jackson's, though, seems to be one of the only places that actually carries single half pans. So you can get, start a collection of, say, schmink paints without buying a whole entire $600 set of them. And yes, that's how much they cost. Um, and FYI, I have a 48 color set on sale. I don't love them, so um, if somebody wants them, I'm willing to pass them along. Anyway, just FYI. So this is the Kodakrodon Gold Deep. I am leaving a bit of a space between the center and the petals. Almost all the way around. It gives the piece some interest. Remember with... Um, watercolor. If you want something to be white, you have to leave it white. I love every kind of paint. I just, I, you know, I am not completely in love with the schminks. I prefer, like I said, my Daniel Smiths and I find I'm not using the schminks. So I felt like it was maybe time for them to move along. My husband is German, so he would, pre he would prefer that I, um, keep them <laughs> just, you know, all right, so now I'm going to take the same Kodakrodon Deep and I'm going to put some around the base of some of my petals. Oh, see, wouldn't she love if you start picked up watercolor in her memory? I think that would be fabulous. And I'm going to drag the color up just a little bit. And I may lift some of it if I get too much, but look at how much depth that gives it by putting that little pop of the gold color down there. And on the sample, I didn't do as much of this as I'm doing now, but you can definitely just take your time with it. And you'll find every time you paint, even if you're painting the same thing over and over, every time you do it, it's going to be different. I didn't do my morning sketch yet, Mark. You're one ahead of me. <laughs> I was too busy trying to cram in my grocery shopping and everything else this morning. Doing Safeway in a hurry is not fun. <laughs> Remember that when you're adding your colors, they're going to dry a bit lighter. Yeah, I don't know, Lisa. It was, you know, fine the other day when we did this on Monday. And I did. there was no Periscope update, so I'm not sure what's going on. Okay, and so I'm going to do that all the way around to the petals in the front. And if you live in an area like some parts of California that grow fields of sunflowers in the spring and summer, it would be fun to go take some inspiration photos because sunflowers are not all yellow. Some of them are different colors. And you notice I'm turning my paper so I don't stick my hand in anything. Internet web zombies, yeah, right? It's a good thing, like I said, that we're, we're just painting flowers, so it's nothing that you necessarily need to see, you know, from a certain angle. Except that when I hold up my palette, you can't, you know, my color key, you can't read the writing, but I think that's probably okay, too. I'll flip it when I put it on YouTube. Isn't that coming out pretty? All right, now we need to do something with these dark, these petals in the back, and they need to be made darker, but I really want to let these other petals dry for a little bit. Let's go back to our flower center, and let's add some... I'm looking. 
What did I use last time? Because, you know, I forget. Let's add some Rose of Ultramarine. Rose of Ultramarine is a really pretty um, pinkish purple. You could use a quidocridone violet if you have that. Think of using shadow colors that are out of the norm rather than just brown or black and white. Um, you know, try something different. Um, yeah, aren't Holbein made by Schmink? Or somebody? Doesn't Holbein make some other color? Okay, so I'm going to grab some of this Rose of Ultramarine. I'm going to turn this so I don't get my hands stuck in anything. And I'm going to go right here. This is still a little wet, so it's going to bleed with some of the other, other colors. I'm okay with that. I'm barely touching the brush to the paper. Oh, you're welcome. I'm here every single Wednesday with Watercolor Wednesday. Watercolor is my favorite of the medium, art mediums. All right, I'm also going to, um, I'm gonna put some like right about there. And then I'm gonna come in with some water and blend it out just a bit. Then I'm going to come in with some Prussian blue. The Holbein, from what I know of Holbein, I've not tr not tried them. You see, I see, I'm, I keep say, I keep thinking that, but I keep also thinking that I got a sample of Holbein from Schmink. That's why I'm thinking they or somebody sent me one, and I think it was a red, and I really liked it. Um, whatever is easy for you to get a hold of and that you really like, you know, use that. Now, I just added blue to this. Yes, we have wet yellow and wet red and orange, and it may make some brown, but this is a watercolor, I mean a sunflower, so it's okay. You know, I never took classes in watercolor. I still haven't taken a watercolor class. I started just playing with um, pencils and markers and a cheap set of watercolor paints. And I have since watched some YouTubers and gotten some books, but I just learned from trying and experimenting. I went to college for early child development. I did not go for art. I was I wanted to be a counselor way back when, a children's counselor. So um so yeah. <laughs> but I've always loved art. Art was one of those things my mom got me um and aunts got me to do pretty early on because it kept me calm. And it got me to focus. Um, I do think there's a way to get the URL to share. You guys should be able to share. I don't know about, I don't know. So I'm just layering on my purple and my blue, and I'm darkening up my flower center. Thank you. I grew up, I do have to say, I, I was always one of these kids. I was always one of these kids that had trouble focusing and concentrating and sitting still. In the 1960s, they didn't really diagnose kids with different you know disorders the way they do now. Um, had they, I probably would have been diagnosed with one. I really had trouble concentrating in school. And focusing but I had two aunts that were fine art college students and they did a lot of babysitting and my mom found out from them that um, doing art and painting and drawing was something that helped me and got me to focus and calm down and and concentrate and um, so I don't ever remember not doing art yeah ADD and that uh, you know these days they you know <laughs> These days they diagnose you with stuff like that. In those days they didn't. I really like the way this looks. And I know it's not traditionally representative of a realistic sunflower center. Neither is this one. But I like the way it looks nonetheless. So I'm going to leave it. 
Now you could, after this dries, go back in and draw, you know, the suggestion of seeds with a black pen. Um, you could use a carbon ink pen, something really fine. Art keeps me, um, helps me concentrate and helps me stay. I have, okay, I've been diagnosed with anxiety disorder, depression, um, and some form of OCD or ADD. <laughs> Just FYI. <laughs> Art, he helps keep me unstressed and it helps keep me concentrating on what's in front of me. Practice, 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 right. I'm going to take some sepia, which is a dark gray brown, and I'm going to mix it with some of the quadacridone gold that I already had on my palette. And then I'm going to um, put some water in there, thin it out a bit. And we're going to use this in a couple places. We're going to let this dry a little bit because I like what's going on there in the middle. Yeah, I like that too. So we're going to come in here to these petals in the back with this color. Just a little bit. A little bit of this is going to go a long way. You don't want to make your petals look like they're dead. You just want to darken them up a little bit. Don't do too many of them with the color before you come in with the water. The paint will start to dry and it'll be a little harder to get it to spread out and blend. Petals are popping, that's right. So remember that you need to not only have your light colors, you need those darker colors to get things to pop. I'm going to come in here with the very tip of my brush and just come in around. These little blurbs where the paint kind of went out my pencil lines, that's just going to make your flower uh, look more realistic. So just let that go. But these petals would be behind the other ones, so they'd be darker. <laughs> i got to turn my paper around so I don't stick my hand in something wet. Because I'm having one of those kind of days, so I bet you yeah, I would do that today. So then we're going to do some water. Sepia is one of my favorite brown colors because it's not a straight traditional brown. It's like a brownish blackish gray color. And like Payne's gray, which is a blue gray, it's more interesting than just plain old brown, I think. So every palette I've ever put together for myself, whether it's acrylic or watercolor, has the same basic range of colors in it I'm finding as the years go by. And sepia is one of those colors I like to have in my palette. Okay, and let's not forget this little half petal right here. Thank you for all the hearts. I love that. Okay, so that's nice, right? Hello, Charlotte. How are you? So that's pretty nice. So we're going to let all of that dry for a bit, and we're going to come in here and do some suggestion of leaves. For that, I'm going to switch to a flat brush because it's a little easier. And I'm going to just grab one of my Princeton Select brushes. If you make me pick a brush brand as my one that's my favorite, it would be Princeton. I like the Princeton Select uh, brushes in particular. Um, is this Princeton Select? Uh, or, Prince, or Princeton Neptune. Now the Princeton Select is the blue handle and it can be used on acrylic or um, watercolor. And the Princeton Neptune is meant for strictly watercolor. Um, this is just an inexpensive royal watercolor brush. This might be from like a six pack from Walmart. Um, I And actually for an inexpensive brush, I like it. The brush is holding up, end is holding up really well. The handle end, not so much. The paint is peeling off, but I gotta say that's probably just me. I am really hard on my brushes. Okay, so now we've got this flat brush and this is a three quarter inch flat. I'm gonna get it wet first. And we're gonna come in with a darker, darkish green. I'm gonna use Cascade Green. Um, which is this one here, which is like a blue-green. I'm going to get my hair out of my palette. <laughs> I've got a piece of hair in there. All right. 
and I'm going to put it on my palette and then I'm going to grab some water. There we go. <coughs> Excuse me. So we want to suggest some leaf shapes. They don't have to be exact, again, exact representations of leaves. I'm an expressive, more of an impressionist painter. Uh, yeah, see? Um, I would stay away from the inexpensive brands of brushes because the bristles come out. Thank you so much, Mark. Um, we're going to start with our darker shade of green, and we're going to come in here next to some of our petals and put the dark green in. And I, if I'm going to, you know, like I said, I'm an impressionist kind of painter. I'm not a realist painter. So I like to suggest leaves rather than draw leaves. Um, you may find that that doesn't work for you, and that's okay. And I know I'm doing kind of the opposite of what you really, um, you know, is recommended for most of the watercolor. This is how I do leaves on this kind of a painting. I start with my darkest value, and then I come in and I'm going to get some water in here. And I'm going to let that paint run and puddle, which is one of the things I love about watercolor. And that's going to lighten up this dark color of paint a lot. And if you get, you know, too much, like, I don't really care for that. It's not going to, you know, the, the artist watercolor paints especially stain the paper. So in some colors, you may never be able to lift completely if you get too much of it on there. Um, just be willing to live with it. That's part of the joys of, you know, watercolor painting um, is figuring out how to make those mistakes work. The freedom of just living with the mistakes. I love that. Don't you love that? A good. So a good brand is Princeton. Princeton Neptune or Princeton Select. If you have a paintbrush that you've let sit in the water, and I'm famous for this with my acrylic brushes, and the metal part, the ferrule, I believe this is called, comes um, off of the handle, but the bristles are still intact and in here tight, get some marine epoxy, and it'll be a two-part mix. Get it at the hardware store. Put some in the metal ferrule. Shove that handle back in there and let it dry. It won't come out again. But I get my brushes when um, my art supply stores have the, the Princeton on sale. Aaron Brothers Art and Framing, which is a division, of, a subsidiary of Michael's. Um, they frequently have buy one, get one free, or buy one, get two free. They carry Princeton Select brushes, and that's when I stock up. The Royal or Royal Langnickel brushes, um, this is a Royal, and I also have Royal, Lang Royal and Langnickel, and they're both inexpensive brushes that come in like multi-packs. I've gotten them at Tuesday morning or Walmart, and other than the paint coming off the handles, I have not had any problem with them. All right, so now I'm going to come in here with more of a sap green, which is a yellowy green. Oh, see, Mark, I know you're in my Facebook group. You should post the link to that in my Facebook group. Because I think that would be helpful to a lot of people. So I'm going to come in here right on top of the green that I already put. I'm going to stick with the lighter areas where the green, the darker green is not so thick. And I'm going to add this lighter green. And that's going to start to suggest sunlight. And, you know, letting your flat brush do things like that and having some marks with some lines, that just suggests, like, stems and things. And so that just gives your painting some interest. All right. I like that. I'm going to switch back to the round brush. And our brown sepia-colored paint. And I'm going to come in here to my flower center and really darken up the edge a lot with the sepia paint. It's 
This is the dark brown color. And look how that just made that pop. I haven't switched colors. I've still got the sepia color on my brush. Just FYI. Yeah, we're going to do galaxies are coming up. We're going to be doing galaxy paintings. I think it's in a few weeks. I don't think it's not next week. Next week is faces. But galaxies are coming up. So I would do a half inch flat. Because that's a very handy brush for watercolor. And then I would do a couple of different sizes of round. I would do something like, this is an, um, a six or an eight, and then I would do something smaller. Like, let's see. This is another Royal brush. See, I think these all came in a multi-pack. Um, this is a 16. This is a nice big flat round, uh, a nice big round brush for doing larger spaces. And this is a number eight. And then if you want, uh, let's see, this is a Princeton Neptune number eight. These are about the same size. Now, not all brush manufacturers, even if they have the same number, the brush isn't necessarily the same size. But see how this one's very pointed? I like, uh, personally, I like that kind of pointy brush because I can get these lines in here or I can lay it down flat and get a nice wash. In the Princeton round brushes, the Princeton Select, the number four round, is my favorite. So if you made me just pick two, I'd probably pick these two. This is a number four round and this is a number eight round. So I'm going in and I'm darkening up some of our spaces here with the sepia colored paint. We're just about done with this. You're welcome, Cheryl, anytime. All right, so something else I did that was fun with this painting is I took my Prussian blue. And I just barely touched my brush to the painting all the way around the edge of the flower center overlapping into the center a bit and onto the petals a bit and you know making different size marks some drag marks some dots let that dry a bit I know the purple is just a great color isn't it we're going to come in here with the Prussian blue into these leaf shapes and the Prussian blue is a very kind of a cool blue and it's a great blue for suggesting shadow. Wow, 42 viewers. And look how that just made that pop right there. It not only made the petals stand out, but it made the, the leaves recede. So really think about your colors, um, you know, adding your shadows with different colors other than just something dark like brown or black. What other dark colors? Cool colors do you have in your palette? Dark, cool violets, cool blues. Some of my two favorite cool colors, Prussian blue and quinacridone purple or quinacridone violet are both great cool colors, as is Payne's gray, which is a blue gray. Welcome all the new viewers. Those of you who missed any part of this, it will be up on YouTube later. It takes me a few hours to get it up on YouTube because there's a lot of finagling to the video I've got to do. 
See, I'm glad. That's what these watercolor Wednesdays are about to help you all out with shading and layering your colors that are having some trouble and confusing or confused about it. On this one, I also did some splattering over the picture with um, just some of my leftover colors. This is watercolor. I love the splatters and I love the, you know, dried puddles and drips. That's one of the things I love about watercolor. So you can take one of your colors like the Prussian blue and add some extra water to it. And I've actually got some neutral tint on here too, which is like a Payne's gray. And just, you know, have some fun with it. What's the worst it could do? Now, if you have a part of your flower, you really don't want to get splatters on. You could just drop a piece of paper on there and um, cover it up before you do your splatters. And just get your brush wet and just and then let it dry <laughs> and isn't that cool these will be uh, scanned and they will be up in my Etsy shop if you want a digital print I will be updating the PDF document with the link to this video once it's on YouTube and anybody who buys the PDF document that goes along with today's broadcast, um, you will get an updated version sent free to your um, email. So make sure you put your email in your order. Otherwise, I'll message you through Etsy and ask you for it. Does anybody have any questions? That Rose of Ultramarine, which is the purpley color you're talking about, is fabulous. Um, this is the Rose of Ultramarine, which has um, more depth of color in the pigment, I think, than um, these other two purples I have on my palette, which I love, but they're all three very different. This one's more blue, and this one's a lot more red. Um, but if you made me pick one, the Rose of Ultramarine is my favorite. Yeah, this one is more vibrant than this one. Um, this was kind of a last minute thought and I kind of did it in a hurry because I was headed out of town. Not that I don't like it and all, and all, but this one's pretty. I took more time with this one today. Thank you guys, I appreciate it very much. If you have any questions, let me know. And, uh, you know, the Holbein paints, Schmink paints, Sennelier uh, is another brand. My problem with the Sennelier watercolor paints is unless you get, they have some cake sets that come in pans like this, and they're great. But if you get the tube Sennelier paints, they never really dry out in the pan. So I don't really like that they stay sticky. So that's a problem for me. And Daniel Smith has like 238 colors. They have a huge range of colors. And they've got some pigments and some colors nobody else has, which is one of my things. Plus, they're made in Seattle. Love that. You're welcome, everybody. And I'm glad that you're enjoying it and you're progressing. Don't forget to just play. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, um, come over to the Facebook group and message me there. Make sure you tag me or one of the admins. And... Um, also, you can go to my my website, GinaBAarons.com, and there's a bunch of information about where to find me, where to buy stuff, and um, um, you know where to where my Etsy shop is and all that. And yeah, buy local if you can. Um, you know, if you don't have to order stuff or get something you know fancy from out of town, there's a lot of really great local you know paint suppliers. So look around and see what you have that's local to you. Seattle's only you know I'm on the West Coast too, so it's not the too far away. And if you want to buy a set of schmink paints, uh, I have a 52 schmink. I have one of these full of schmink paints. I'll show you. Only used a couple of times in a metal box. It's listed in my Etsy shop. I've only used it a couple times, and one of those was to make the color key. And I added four more colors to it, so it's a 52 box palette. Uh, well, helps if I sh so you can see it if I turn it this way. I forgot I zoomed in. There we go. It's in my Etsy shop, so, you know, look it up. 
You're welcome. I'm going to download it. I've got to download it to Dropbox. Then I got to fuss with it in the video editing software to make the picture as big as possible. But it will be there sometime at the end of the day today. I'll do my best. All right. You guys all have a great day. Don't forget to go out and play. Have some fun. Uh, play with your watercolors. And, oh, 170 miles to Seattle, Mark? Are you on the West Coast? Um, anyway, go out and do something nice for yourself. Play with your watercolors. Have some fun. Take a walk out in the fresh air. Um, and um, I'll see you all next week. Oh, good, Mark. Yeah, Seattle. I'm, my parents live in Rochester, Washington. I might need to go visit them so I can go to Seattle. <laughs> all right. I'll talk to you all later. Bye.